I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering and data analytics. In this episode, we're going to go back to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're going to look at how to use tabs on our forms so that we can have a similar display to kind of what you see in your browser, you know, where you can have multiple tabs and uh, on each of the tabs there's some different information. Well, when we do data entry, we can also use a tab control, and, uh, but we'll use it for a slightly different uh, use case. And so without further ado, let's get to our tabs in Microsoft Access. Okay, so uh, we're going to use an example that we started in our last episode, which was on subforms, because we created a subform on a form. So if you uh, want to see that video, make sure you go back and watch that one um, so you can see where we're at. Uh, but essentially what we got is uh, we had three tables with some order, order item information, and then we had a order subform uh, that we put onto uh, like a main orders form. And it's very, very simple. Uh, this was all just auto, mostly auto-generated from, uh, uh, from the wizard. But as you can see, we have a main form that has an order on the top part. And then down below, we've got a list of all the items that were on that order. And we did that by creating a subform. And then uh, once we had this, you could go and you could <clears throat> make it look all nice and pretty and, and, and stuff like that. But the essential uh, idea is there. So here is our subform um, that we created. And uh, there, we're going to delete that. And then uh, we're going to put it back on once we have a tab control in there so that we can have several subforms and then they'll be nice and easy to uh, to uh, look at. Okay, so what we did is we go to the Design tab on uh, in the Form Design Tools, and we're going to grab that tab control. It looks like a folder. Uh, kind of looks like a folder with a couple of tabs on it, which is exactly uh, what it's supposed to be. And uh, we'll sort of uh, move our cursor or our mouse back over on top of the form, and now you can see there's there's a tab control there, and uh, it's got a couple of pages that were sort of auto-generated. They say page 15 and 16, um, but you'll see right now what I have selected is the tab control around the whole outside of it all. But if I click on the page, you'll see that the page gets selected, and in this case it has a name of page 15. And then if I click on the other page, and it gets selected, then you see page 16. And say if I uh, right-clicked on that tab there, I can also insert or delete a page. Uh, I could have page 17. Um, and you'll see that that comes up in the property sheet as well. And so if I click outside of it along the top there, you'll see that it selects the entire tab control. And so that's a separate object too. So the tab control is its own thing. And then inside of the tab control, are all the tabs. And so we're going to give it a, a name, TCT main, which actually makes sense. And then we'll click on each of the pages. We're going to do the same thing. So we're going to click on the first page, go to the other um, tab in the properties, and we'll call it tab order items. Now you'll see it gives this ugly name tab order items, which is for programming to the actual tab. And uh, in order to get rid of that, we're actually going to go to the Format tab in, in the Properties, and we're going to just give it a nice name, Order Items. So now we've got a tab that has the right name, and it also has a nice caption. And we'll do the same thing for our other two tabs here. So I'll click on Other inside of the uh, uh, Properties, and I'm going to call it Tab um, <clears throat> Product List, because we're going to put the product list there for reference on the same uh, form because we're going to pretend that you know whoever is working on orders every once in a while they need to look at the product list and so we'll give that a name as well called product list and um, and then we can uh, go to the last page and we're gonna we're gonna say that the user sometimes wants to write war and peace in the comments box up above there so we're going to take an existing field from our form and we're going to move it onto, onto the tab and it'll remain part of the form, but it's just going to be on a tab. And so you can see how I can do that as well. So we'll call that one comments. And then now we've got uh, sort of the, the frame or the skeleton of our tab. 
that we're going to populate with two subforms, one for order items, one for uh, product list, and then uh, we're going to put the last one with just a field on it for comments. And as sort of a final thing that we can do is we can type in the control tip text uh, on each of the items as well. And what that'll do is when somebody hovers their mouse over top of the tab, um, you can give them an, an instruction or something like that. What, what is this tab for? Or, you know, whatever. So if I click on product list, go to the other tab in, in, uh, in the properties, and then under control tip text, I can say, you know, this is the full product list. It's not a filtered list, so just so that you know or whatever. <laughs> and then in the last one under comments, you know, uh, these are, you know, the comments for this order. Uh, make sure to leave a comment when something happens, right? Um, so that when they hover their mouse over top of the tab, um, they'll see that pop up. And that's a nice little handy way to give users a little bit of, um, a little bit of information or guidance. And so from there, uh, you can see we've got our comments and our order items and, uh, uh, and we're going to take our subform that we created before, and just like we did in the last video, we're just going to drag that. Now you'll see that, that it turned black when you hovered over. You've got to make sure that when you drop something on, that, on the tab, that the tab turned black, because that means that it accepted the item. Otherwise, you might actually drop it underneath of the tab control, and then it'll get all, all weird and it won't work properly. So um, now we've got a nice title on our tab itself. So I'm going to delete the label, uh, which was above, uh, which was above our our subform, and then I'll sort of, you know, go into our data here. I'm just going to make sure that the parent and link child fields, link or pardon me, link master and link child, are are set properly. They get kind of set automatically, uh, so that every time the record above changes, um, the, the, the subform will be filtered to what we want. So there's the record up above. It's order ID number one. It had all of these toys on it. Um, and uh, um, you can see that that tab has those, those uh, toys on it. And so now what we want to do is we want to uh, uh, fill in the other, uh, the other the product list tab and to do that, we're going to create a subform and then put it onto the tab. So uh, following the design that I did last time, we'll use the wizard. I'm just going to do, use the form wizard and we'll grab the order product table, um, which has the products in it. And uh, we're going to do a tabular uh, layout. And, uh, and then I'll just uh, call this uh, order product subform. And uh, that's going to give us a nice nice little uh, auto-generated form that actually doesn't look nice at all but but it'll do for now and uh, uh, so what we'll do here is we're going to go back to our design and I'm going to get rid of that big title up above because this is a subform you know we'll select those those guys there and just move them up so we're not using so much um, real estate and then this this is a big field um, so it create auto created a huge you know uh, data entry field, but I'll just make it so that it all lines up, and then I'll save that. Now we now we've got a subform that we can drag onto our uh, just like we had for the other one. We can drag that onto the tab, and so we'll go into the design of the main form, and we're going to grab this uh, product list here tab, and then we're going to drag on and make sure it goes black. And I usually sort of drag it into the middle a little bit and then, you know, place it after, uh, after it drops. So I make sure that it gets onto the tab and then I can space it out, give it lots of, give the uh, subform control lots of uh, space. And then I'll delete the label just like the other one and maybe, you know, line it up. Um, so if I tab between these, you'll see it sort of shifts a little bit, you know, I might want to do something like grab that and just nudge it up. I'm using the arrow key and now they're kind of similar, you know, so it isn't jarring when the user moves between them. Um, so, so that's great. And so now we've got a subform. We have two subforms on, on a tab. 
and uh, on tabs and we can flip between those as a user which is fantastic now a uh, good point is to look at the um, the link master and link child fields in this case we want to look at the full list so there's no linking we want to see the full product list because the you know the user if they're on the phone with customer they might want to look at the product list you know to get details or, so, or to get names or whatever um, so now we have one subform that is uh, filtered to the order and one that is not and the user can flip between those uh, as they're working and uh, so moving on then we want to take this comment field here uh, to show that you can actually take a, an existing field that's in in the form itself you don't have to put something that doesn't belong to the current form you can actually take all kinds of controls from your existing form and if you have tons of fields you might want to have five tabs and all the fields are actually part of the current record set or the current uh, record so we can right click and cut that field off of the main part and then we're going to go and on the tab itself on the name comments we're going to right click and paste that and that's going to paste it onto the tab itself as we saw there um, so that's one way of getting uh, a control onto the tab and make sure that it gets on there is you can right click on the tab itself like the little part that sticks up and right click paste and then you can pay it'll make sure that a control gets on there um, so there you go now we've got a, our comment field which is uh, really big and you can type war and peace in there if you want um, and so there's our uh, our top part of our form which is sometimes called the tombstone and uh, we've got an order items product list and a comments and you can see um, you know uh, if we sort of like <clears throat> hover over the main part of the tab you'll see that the uh, the tooltip pops up and gives a little bit of information for the user and uh, and so that can be very helpful as well when you're using the tab control and so there you have it we have our tab control we've got our order items product list and comments all together and everything's filtered the way we want and that's how you use tabs in access hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use tabs in microsoft access if you like what you saw today please give the video a thumbs up uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet and uh, click the bell when you see the bell and if you have any questions or comments put those in the comment section below have a great day have a safe day and i'll catch you next time